Babe, I figured it out. I, I know how to hit the one-handed backhand now. Gotta try this. Humana, 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 humana! Whoa! You rotate the hips, rotate the hips! Oh, God! Here it comes, here it comes. Yeah! Power position, power position. Oof! So if you're like me and you've been having a lot of trouble with your backhand, even after you've been watching loads of videos and trying out all these really good meaning techniques and tips, there's a couple of things to think about. The first thing I want you to think about is story. The brain loves to be right, and my wife can attest to this. But if you tell yourself that your backhand is no good, or it cracks under pressure, or you can never drive it, or you can never rip it, and that's the story that you're telling yourself, the brain loves to be right. And when you're in a situation where you need to depend on that backhand, you will ultimately self-sabotage and hit a few like I was just hitting. So what you want to do instead is create a new story. And I don't mean this mumbo jumbo, this kind of hocus pocus, but start to think about what you do want to believe about your backhand. And we're going to give you the tools to actually build it. But the story's got to be in first. Otherwise, the subconscious mind will never let you actually develop one, which would be no good. So for example, if your story right now is, I have a crappy one-handed backhand, or my backhand breaks down under pressure, think about the story you do want to create. So maybe it's, I have a solid one-handed backhand, or I'm developing a solid one-handed backhand if the other one is too much of a stretch. But we want to put a stake in the ground as a possibility that your brain and your body can go after. Okay, so we had destroyed that limiting belief. We have put in a new belief. Now let's get into actually how to build that backhand. What most people do is they'll go out and they'll watch like a bunch of videos or maybe they'll even have a lesson and they'll go out and they'll try and piece together a stroke or a technique from the beginning all at once. And for some people that works, but for most it doesn't. What you wanna do is break them into small pieces or chunks. So chunking is when you take really small bits of information, you master them, you get really good at them, then you add another small little chunk, and you add that on to the first skill, you link those skills, and then ultimately you turn it into the whole skill. And that's exactly what we do. In fact, I got two videos on my channel that I'll link to down below, one for the one hand and one for the two hand, and I'll link to those down below. All right, and the third superpower to learning a backhand really quickly is this thing called 80-20. 20% of the things that you do get you 80% of the results. Now the problem with going out and rallying with a friend, or in some cases even having someone feed you balls, is there's a very small percentage of reps that are actually great reps. So you know, you'll lift your head too early, or you'll shank the ball, or you know you won't get your timing right. There's a lot that goes into hitting a one-handed or two-handed backhand, as you probably know. So what you wanna do is find a way to get a lot more quality reps. And there's a great way to do that called the iCoach. My good buddy Lenny Schloss developed this amazing device here and he did the research at Johns Hopkins University. And what he found was amateur tennis players on average are missing the sweet spot of the racket about 80% of the time and the pros miss it about 50% of the time. And that's because the ball flying away is a massive distraction, right? We wanna see how good or how bad of a shot we just hit so we can get prepared for the next ball. That makes sense. So we take away the flying ball and all of a sudden, we've got total concentration on the point of contact, which as you know, is the moment of truth. So with this device, you can actually get 80% quality hits, which means if you practiced for five minutes a day, you would have a thousand quality reps in a week and 5,000 quality reps over the course of five weeks. Incidentally, 5,000 quality reps is right around what you need to master a skill. Now you might say, Ramon, that's great. What about shadow swings? Shadow swings are okay. The problem is you don't get the feedback of the ball and you don't get the feeling of what it is to hit a good quality shot. All right, and there you have it. If you want to learn a backhand that's really solid, that's gonna hold up under pressure, there's three things you gotta do. You gotta be aware of the bad story that you're telling yourself. You gotta write a new story. Second thing you wanna do is utilize chunking, using small pieces of information, mastering those things, putting them together. And then the third thing is to use the 80-20 principle and make sure that you're getting those quality reps a lot more often. And if you wanna learn how to make this backhand really good because you wanna actually win more matches, then I got a PDF you're gonna to wanna to download. It's called the five biggest mistakes that amateur competitive tennis players make 
when trying to close out matches. I'll leave a link to that down below. Go download it. It's totally free. And in the meantime, thanks so much for watching this video. I had a great time making it for you. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see in future videos, and I'd be happy to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. All right, thanks again. See you soon.